Thanks for joining me in this beautifully warm day. Uh, this is one of the first Enhanced 4700s that is rolled off the line. So we called it Enhanced rather than the new model because it's just as good and as powerful as the 49, 4700 has always been. But we enhanced the electrical system and some interiors uh, components. So I'll kind of give you a quick walk around. I'm going to focus more on the changes that have been made since uh, to the 4700. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, so David mentioned this morning one of the most important parts of a vocational truck, when, when I, I like to quiz people and ask, what do you think the most important part of a vocational truck is? And most people will say durability or reliability. Every once in a while, somebody's savvy and they'll say, oh, it's weight, how, how lightweight it is or how heavy it is. But quite frankly, the most important thing about a vocational truck is that it can be unfit to do its job, right? It can be the strongest truck in the world and if you can't put that body on it, it's useless. So I'm going to start just by walking around some of the, the changes that we made to make the upfit process easier. Um, one of them, not in, incredibly sexy, quite frankly, is the in, electrical system is entirely new. We added a third PDM, which increased the amperage and the number of fuse spots. It goes up to 42. I can get you the number precisely of what it was. I believe 34, but don't write that down in a story because you'll have to check the number. Um, and also increase the amperage. And there is a ground wire stud just underneath the hood that allows a bodybuilder to directly ground the power, which they didn't have before. They had to guess a little bit and try and determine the power of it. There's also um, an incredible, uh, probably the best electrical thing that we've done on this model is the bodybuilder harness and cable. So I'll invite all of you to get up one at a time into the truck afterwards. Um, if you peer just through this door, you can see that interface. Oh, you can't see it because there's a seat in the way. If you look straight across, you'll see an interface connector, and it's a it's a wiring connector that is also labeled. This particular one has blunt cut wires. You can order it with or without a connector or just the bare wires. This is bare wires. They're all labeled for all the critical functions bodybuilders need to access to program the truck. So a remote throttle, um, engine stop, things like that. Also on bodybuilder upfit, this particular unit um, is set up to be a cement mixer, a, a, a bridge, a bridge law mixer with the lift axle. So they will almost always have a transition plate. What used to happen about 10 or 15 years ago is they didn't have this plate on there and the frame rails would crack right behind the back of the cab because of all the force that that mixer is putting right there in the back of the cab cross member location. Uh, so every we install these as an option for every everyone that reinforces the frame and keeps the uptime, helps the bodybuilder install it. Also, something that may not jump out at you but is critical for vocational trucks is they have nothing located in this section. That's where the pump mounts. So you can imagine if a customer were to get the truck and there were air tanks there, the air dryer was in the inside of the rail, or even worse, a cross member, the bodybuilder would have to relocate all of those components before they could even start their work. So that drives time and cost and expense. So we are very careful through the entire order process to make sure we know where the truck is going so we can design the best one. This particular truck also has inverted cross members at the back. That's for barrel clearance and, uh, and the uh, hydraulic ram. There it's for that third trailing arm axle or that fourth axle on this truck that goes down at the back. So that's also an option on the truck as it exists. Um, this one has a nice, you can see a lot of repto shaft clearance. So if you were to, it's an Allison 4500 RDS, but you can see the repto shaft off the engine. It's an X12 engine, which is new, um, available only from Daimler at this time in this particular market. It is a 600 pounds lighter, depending on spec, than their previous engine, which for a mixer is about an eighth of a yard of concrete. So you imagine if they're making 10 or 15 turns a day, it really starts to add up. It's a significant, significant amount of weight. Um, we are going to step around to the front and talk a little bit about safety. Any questions on the, the chassis or the back end? <laughs> There's always a debate, as I think you guys have heard, about safety systems. And the most important thing for safety is really the driver. So the aggressive hood slope on this one allows even somebody as short as myself to be seen while standing right in front of it. You can imagine on a job site, that's a huge safety advantage. Uh, this particular unit 
also has our collision mitigation system. This one is made by Rabco. It was the first time it was available in a Western Star product uh, for the vocational, for vocational market. And as David spoke about, it is becoming more and more demanded. This uh, unit also is something that's quite unusual. It's got the third eye camera. Uh, customers are really starting to demand camera systems. They say 360 degree camera views, but what they really mean is to be able to see all the way around the truck. This is one that we installed in our offline yard with a partnership with Third Eye, um, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. You can see forward. It also has both side mirrors, and there's one in the back that they can also adjust after the body's put on. It does create some complications when you ship an incomplete vehicle and you know they're going to put a body on it and working with the, the uh, truck equipment manufacturer to make sure they relocate the camera properly can be a bit difficult. Uh, the other thing that has really changed is the interior. So if you guys want to come over to this side of the vehicle. interior. The door pocket handle is new. There is an LCD computer screen now that has very typical information you would expect from an LCD screen, mileage, uh, engine hours, things like that, PTO mode as well. Uh, one of the newer things that we have, and, and try not to be shocked by this, is USB power ports. That was actually something new. We have two USB power ports in the dash on this one. Uh, as well as customizable switch engages. You can also see the screen for the third eye camera just sitting there on top of the dash. Customers will tell us where they want that camera based on what they prefer their driver to see. Some of them like it in this position where it's up higher and they believe directly in the driver's line of sight. Some of them prefer it to be lower so it's not blocking the field of view. And it's really a customer preference issue. This also has our new steering wheel which has all of the controls on the steering wheel. Uh, that's really to keep your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, so it's also a safety and efficiency. Uh, people, And it has the new column, um, which controls the jake brake on the stock. So jake brakes always used to be switches on the dash, and when we first, uh, Daimler first went to the stock, people were a little bit thrown off by it. And when customers went away from it, they said, oh my gosh, it's so much safer just to have it there and be able to pull it. And I don't know if any of you drive, but it, it just is. It's so easy to activate your jake wheel. Um, so that is the end of my formal walk around, but I would really like it if each and every one of you climb in and take a look at that bodybuilder connector. You can imagine uh, the wires are, are sitting on the floor. They're all labeled and tagged so that it's easy for upfit. And right underneath that, under the floor mat, there's actually a pass-through that goes out the bottom of the cab, so there's no more drilling required in the back wall of the cab. And just another, another thing that we did to improve upfit efficiency and time. So are all of these particular features available as of today as for, for any uh, purchases going forward or is anything Correct. just to come? No, um, some of them just come and some are optional and I can get you a, a list of exactly which is which. Sorry, I meant in terms of timeline, are some of them to come before they are available or are all of them available they as are of all today? Available. Okay. Yes. So we actually did a knife edge production uh, that started on August 5th. So every 4700 built after August 5th will have this electrical system. And everything that I've talked about will either be standard or available, depending on what it is. The safety system is optional. Uh, the, the interface connector is optional. I think almost everything else is standard. Then do you have a one sheet or something to that effect you could share with us? Get you one. Okay. Yeah. I know we have it. I can dig it out. Please do. Yes, sir. Did you have to do anything in particular to protect, better protect the safety systems in a vocational environment, so it's a little more abuse than you might see in a non-highway setting for the sensors and things like that, and cameras and whatnot. We have not had to, but we also haven't had it out operating in extreme conditions like that. So at this point, the, the forward sensor, one is uh, the camera in the windshield, so that one's fairly protected as well. That's the forward sensor sensor is set back into the buffer. So it's fairly well protected. We haven't had issues in testing, but customers can almost always test it a little more than we can. So we'll we'll find out. 
And is all this pretty much just uh, as it evolved from customer requests and demands, or same thing you hear about back and forth? actually have a, a truck equipment manufacturing team that is fairly unique in the industry that goes out and engineers and depending on the level of comfort that the manufacturer the engineers. Yeah. 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 And then they come up with you know sounds that I personally don't we have options that they just don't care about because I'm getting things that are going to be used in the industry. So sometimes you just don't get to get to the information from the I think everybody understands how quickly technology is changing, and that's one of the probably the most challenging and wide range of sectors. Wide range of where they are on that spectrum. So we have to kind of get where they're changing versus the changing technology, and some are refusing to change at all. So working with them so they come up with our concepts, our ideas. We have a temp council that we work very closely with, and we run all sorts of ideas by them. Some they like, some they don't like, and we kind of also go through the design process. That's all on the product strategy side. Somebody better give them.